Hey everybody. Hello. I don't know who's here yet. It says who's here, but sometimes that's not everybody who's here yet. Hey Don. Mike, Mike, Mike. Raymond. Odisan. Street Copper. I hope he comes back, you guys. He's pretty cool. Hey CP. Dun, dun, dun. How's everybody doing? Hey, Tussle. Tussle is still up. That's Ian. That's Ian's nickname. So I'm going to wait till a few more people get in here and we'll just all kind of hang out. Hey, JV. Hey, John. John Euler. I still haven't had a chance to watch that video. I'm going to. Hey, Miss Nancy. Hello. <laughs> That's a hello with a cake on your face. <laughs> hey, half face. Hey, Ace. Hey, Tim. So I was having a conversation with one of my friends in a live chat. And I started thinking about this, so I thought we'd talk about it a little. So we'll see what everybody thinks from all the different ways of life that we have. We have a lot of outdoors guys. We have some fishing guys. We have some people that live in the country, some people that live in the city. Um, so I'm curious what everyone's... Hi, Dunlap. I'm curious what everyone's... Yeah, congrats on that deer for John Euler. If you guys haven't, I haven't seen the video yet because I've been so busy, but everybody says it's a good video. Go watch Don Oiler's video. <laughs> Did someone say fishing? <laughs> hey, Chad. <laughs> Yop. Hi, Sakuna. Yep, I will now. And we have a few more things to do tonight after we get all done with this. And hey, Trappers for 100 years. Did I say hi? Hey, Sam one. How oh, that moved. You're an indoors guy. You're kind of. You're not an outdoors guy, but you're not an indoors guy. Ian. We do outdoor stuff. Thanks to all who watched. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm just so far behind. Hey, Lonnie. Yeah, I'm. Just so much stuff going on. Robo it. And I didn't even see him up there. You know, sometimes this thing just pops and you think you're seeing everything, but I'm not sure if it's popping all the all the comments in there. Because I didn't see Evan. Hi Cecilia. Hey Miss Ellie. Oh, I forgot to check my teeth lipstick on my teeth. <laughs> we got to see Mo. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, I got to go see. But I've just been, it's been crazy. You know, because where we live, if we go to a doctor's appointment that's a really good doctor, it's two hours. Um, or a good hospital with a, you know, it's two hours away. So. <laughs> that's okay, Mark. That sounds like fun. Mark's going to Colorado. But yeah, so like Tuesday, we spent <clears throat> two hours plus, you know, plus stopping and whatever else we needed to do. Um, do you have your chat on live or top chat? Um, I don't think it gives me that option in StreamYards. I probably need to do a pop out. Uh, I don't think it. It says, hey, do you want live chat or top chat? So it might be a little bit, but it's it's not me going to the doctor. It's my husband. Um, but me, I feel tired. I'm tired, but I'm not. He's not sick, sick. He hurt his leg. Hurt his knee. I need a monster. 
Maybe I should do the pop out chat. That's not a bad idea. Hold on, you guys. Let me pop that out. Because I don't feel like I'm seeing all the messages. And I hate that. Because then someone thinks I'm not acknowledging them. And I don't want that. That's not That's not the type of live streamer I am. We have to fix it. Oh. Hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, let's go to the live chat, and hey, Joe. Pop out chat. Oh, they made some more changes. Okay, so we got pop out chat. Bear with me, my beautiful friends. I'm going to get this pop out chat up here, and I think that'll be better. Okay. Let's go to live chat. Okay, let me go back a little bit and just let me double check. I've seen everybody. JV. Is in the chat? Okay. Um, hello. Mark's going to Colorado. Everybody's saying hi. Sent one's going Tanya. Make sure that works. Hey, <laughs> cool that I'm on time. Joe's like, woohoo, I'm on time. Can you go to a good vet if they're closer than the hospital? No. Can't do that. Said a little like six times. <laughs> Hi, Drew. <laughs> I'm trying, Mr. Captain. Okay. So I see everything. There's Cecilia. There's John. Davey. Drew Douglas. Not. I know you are. Big silly. <laughs> Raymond. Oh, yeah. Popping out the chat makes a huge difference. Huge. Okay. Hey, Kevin Baker. <laughs> no, I'm not going to a vet. No, my uh, my husband hurt his knee, so we had to go get an MRI, and then we had to go to the surgeon, and we had to do all this stuff. And so I'm just tired. I'm a little tired. I'm sure he's tired, too. And it'll all be fine. It's all good. Finally made it. To oh, hey, Monty. So I guess we got 26 people. So I'm going to start this conversation. So I was having a conversation. And I know people ask this question, question all the time of what is homesteading? What is modern homesteading? Right? Well, some people have a perception that homesteading is all about overalls and well I guess it's a couple some of the things are normal just what everyone thinks it is overalls and and working in the dirt and gardening and chickens and cows and pigs and it's like being a mini farmer and um, there's also the no debt self-sufficiency um, side aspect of it are you tired, Kevin? Or me? <laughs> um, overalls? I like overalls. I hear Drew and think automatically in a very nice screw. Oh, it's a boy. Hey, John. I have so many Johns. Hey, I'm Paved Explorer. It was me she was talking to. <laughs> no, it wasn't, actually. It was someone else. But there was... Uh, well, Ellie and I had a conversation. Hey, Jake. Okay. Cool. Um, we were, we were having a conversation about a long time ago. Me and Ellie had a conversation before I started this channel. And some of you know this story. And there was a big to-do. There was drama, shocking, in the YouTube world, and there was a channel that was pretty large, and they, the lady who was on that channel, made a comment that people were playing at homesteading, that they weren't being real homesteaders, that, that her and her husband were real homesteaders, but that people were, and I don't think she really meant it horribly, but it really triggered off a bunch of people, and you know how that goes, and so I was sitting there and this was three years ago or longer. 
and I'm sitting there with my daughter and, you know, I, I look at her and I go, okay, so here's what happened on the YouTube stuff in the world of YouTube. And hey, boats. <laughs> you just want to know which came first, chicken or the egg chicken. Wow, I wonder why that didn't let you put that in there. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, that's funny. Wow. Okay. So we're having this conversation about it. And my daughter, and, and even today, or yesterday, her and I had another conversation. But that wasn't what sparked all this off. It was kind of all a combination of everything. And so we had this conversation about is my daughter a homesteader? Well, back then it was, are we, home, are we playing at homesteading? And we're like, hell yeah, we're playing at homesteading. We're learning to can, we're learning to incubate eggs. We have chickens. We're learning to milk goats. We're learning to raise our own food and be self-sufficient and buy bulk feed and um, collect rainwater so that our water bills are not so high because where we live, the water is very expensive. They have to bring it in and put it in the tower and, and it's expensive. Um, it's not well water. And so, so we were having that conversation back then and we're like, yeah. And I think that's what kind of sparked me off to start a channel too, was I want iguanas lay eggs. Can they be scrambled? Absolutely boats. I, I think so. Is the air we breathe even really more? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I told my husband and I said, we live in a movie, movie script. You know, everybody's lives are movie scripts right now. So I'm just going to roll with it. <laughs> you know, I'm going to just roll with it and keep smiling and move on. <laughs> it's amazing. People are amazing to me, good or bad. You know, how, how good someone is or how odd they are or, something they do that just you just go what I don't know but if I say something silly in the woods am I still wrong in my wife's eyes is she with you <laughs> only if she's with you <laughs> it's possible <laughs> so we had that conversation way back when, and then I was having a conversation in a live chat last night about what that person's perception of homesteading was. And I, and I was actually almost shocked by the perception, um, but I can understand it, you know. And um, so I started thinking about it and, you know, modern homesteading, a lot of it is, and I know Judith Davis, she may not know I'm live right now if she's in here. I didn't see her closing has been plum delayed for weeks now. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Half Century Farm. I think homesteading is falling a path towards some level of self-sufficient. You shouldn't feel like a homesteader because you're taking baby steps. You shouldn't feel like a home. You shouldn't feel like a homesteader or should. Not like, yeah. I think anybody can be a homesteader. And I think there's a lot of people that live, yes, not everyone can just drop off the grid one day and start doing horse and plow and digging. Right. And, and that, and for me, I think that's part of it. You know, out where I live, half of the stuff people do already is considered being a homesteader, probably over half. They can, they grow gardens, a lot of them have livestock, a lot of them are farmers, um, should. That's what I thought you meant, Zach. I thought you meant that. I just, you know, it's reading. Um, and I think there's a big difference between someone who goes off grid and someone that's a homesteader and someone that does bushcraft. I think there's a lot of different aspects to it, but what most the modern day, okay, I call them straights. The straights is what I would call it. The normal people, the everyday people that go to McDonald's and Taco Bell and and shop every day and pick up, you know, yeah, there's different degrees, but it's still homesteading. You're still you're still learning to start to learn that you don't have to depend on 
huge base society street I hate to use that word but society or the normal society to survive because you don't you don't have to go to McDonald's all the time you don't have to have someone else cook your food you can make all of your meals yourself <laughs> you know people have done it for years <laughs> If you were an off the grid homesteader, we wouldn't know it because you wouldn't have YouTube. Mm. But there are off grid homesteaders that have YouTube. There are people that are off grid that have solar panels and that can get internet and do have satellites. So that's not necessarily true. So, rather cook my own food and grow it also. Me too. And I can't do it all, I'm not 100% yet. Um, I know people who have been, who have huge farms that still are not there where they, but we go to the store nowadays, it's for, now when we first moved here, it wasn't that way. We do buy snacks and things like that, but nowadays it's mostly for dairy. Um, it's for dairy and uh, like, you know, shampoo and things like that, but I'm starting to change my ways a little bit on that. Hi, Square Wood Outdoors. <laughs> Nancy, <laughs> yes, make your own food. <laughs> totally agree. We all start somewhere. We learn and add as we can. And, the, and that was something Monty said. And so it's one of those things where I think, I think that, oh, it's okay, half pace. I totally understand. And a generator. Yeah, oh, I so need a generator. I so need a generator, but they did come today because our town, where our town is, Squarewood. Yes, I want a milking couch, JV. Where our town is, Squarewood, there's one power line in, one power line out, one gas line in, one gas line out. I mean, it's not, if it goes down, it's down. Power's down, it's down. And the we were so lucky. Oh my gosh, we're so lucky. We have this huge, gigantic tree, sweet gumball tree out front oh don't stay quiet talk to us square wood you're fine bud um people living in a van down by the river have wi-fi yes they do uh mike turner was up there today got a good look at him sure Australia. oh good okay and yes i want a cow no power of any kind oh, okay i got you captain don't believe in walmart anymore yeah yep it's hard too because that's the only option we have other than ordering on Amazon. Today, what's in the envelope? It's in a new one. Um, Evan, they are <laughs> not too fast. Evan, they're really holding up Canadian stuff. That's what I heard. Hey, Ralph. Hey, LG Bass. So, oh, yay. Hi, Judah. <laughs> You know, yesterday I just wanted to sit on Judith's porch or have her come sit on mine. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, hug me again, Judith. I just need one. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're holding it. They're holding up stuff going to Canada. It's no worries, Ralph. I'm glad you came by. See, I haven't done that yet, Monty, on the sourdough. My husband loves sourdough, and I'm scared to do it. I can make regular bread. I can make pretzels, I can do pie crust, I can do, uh, yeah, Evan, totally. Um, I can do lots of different pastries and things like that. <laughs> I will, Ian, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> what I'd like to do is get a milk cow and then have that cow have babies and then raise those cows for meat, and that just starts the rotation of meat cow milk cheese i'd love to make my own cheese and i'm not into the goat part of it because we tried that with my daughter's goats and it just we tried it a couple of times and some of it was okay but it for her they liked the goat's milk and they would drink it and stuff but i couldn't do it so no one has smoke houses anymore you're gonna make one though you mean like to smoke meat it's terrifying. Just try. You got this. I know. I need to just do the sourdough thing. I need to just do it. Do you have like a recipe type of thing for it? You want to send me something in Instagram that you're that you're fine with? 
my perception is homesteading is just claiming a piece of property and doing a certain amount of improvements for a mile of time, rest is country living. Right. Now, the one thing about it is you have to look at it as what is modern homesteading? What does the rest of the world think homesteading is? There are some people that, um, I need a bowl too. No, I don't because you can have them taken care of or have someone bring a bowl over or take the cat over there and bring it back. You don't have to keep the bowl. Um, you can get the, you can get it online. They have vegetable and other, but you can get it online because we got it for the goat's milk for the, to making goat's cheese. Thank you, Monty. But it, it's one of those things where it takes time and we've been here several years and we're just trying to get to the point where we are more self-sufficient. Like right now we're better than we've been the whole time we've lived here. We have two freezers full of food. I've got canned goods and paper products and all of our cleaning supplies that we need for a very long time. And you could also say that that's partially prepping because I'm, I'm telling you there are people out there that are homesteaders that they would not have to buy a thing for two years or longer. But without livestock, you're not homesteading, just camping. <laughs> now, now. You've got to inspire people to understand that they are a homesteader. may not be homesteading, but if you have a psyche of a homesteader, you are already starting to grow your own herbs even if you live in the city. You're starting to try to learn to can. You're, it would, right, Judith? It would absolutely make such a good video. And I, I like Ellie and I, hey, respect the tale, Ellie and I, uh, tried different things like she did string cheese and I know she did ice cream and they would drink the milk she would add sugar and she tried a soft cheese but we never tried any type of hard cheeses with the goat's milk and I'd really I'd really like to get a cow at some point it, it you know depending on what happens in our lives here um And that's part of it too. Consider modern homesteading as a gradual decline on the dependence of big corporations influence in your everyday life. It'll be a gradual move moment towards self-reliance. Yes. So that I don't have to depend on their, and, and honestly, do we know there's going to be a grocery store or not? Sure. Yes, probably. Are they going to have everything that you want? Is it going to be natural? Is it going to be, Boats is it? <laughs> Try to he does that. He's funny. No, Boats is funny. <laughs> no, I'm not a vegetarian. And and I think people look at that too. They say, oh well, all homesteaders are hippies. No, there are some. Most of them are pretty pretty talented and skilled people, and they have a lot. They know a lot of stuff. A lot more than I do. And, and this is the one part of, like, I know a lot of things, you know, from doing artwork and doing big business and living in different large cities and living in small cities. Hey, Lisa, can cheese whiz be made from goat's milk? Yes, absolutely can. Um, smaller breed cow, we call them Oreo cows, Oreo cows. Yeah, I need, I really would like to get one. We're not there. Um, we're kind of seeing what we're doing with stuff, but I think that would be our next thing would be getting a cow. And uh, because we have, we don't have a lot of space here. That's part of it is the space, but we don't need huge amounts of space for like one cow. So we're going to try it. But, but I think my whole thing is, you know, when I, it's like little silly things. Like when you, when you talk to someone about having your own chickens and they're like, oh, that's cool. So what, what happens to the chickens later? What do you mean later? You mean, well, when they stop. Hi, Rick. <laughs> hey, Rick Bork. Um, like what happens to the chickens? And you have to explain to them that as they get older, 
um, you have to cull them. And they're like, well, what does that mean? And that means, well, you harvest them. And you have to try to find a nice way to tell that person, you know, because they really, a lot of people just really do not understand where their food comes from. And I think for me, it all started over 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I saw an article and I had some massive stomach issues and was wondering why, um, but of what's in our food and here are the things in our food and these are the things in your kid's cereal and these are, you know, and you're like, okay. And I remember the first time, yeah, I would love to do that, Monty. I need to find somebody around here that has a milk cow. You know what I mean? Name changes to gumbo. Hey, Big Joe. Big Joe, did the uh, boxy get a hold of you, bud? <laughs> yeah, Ralph, sure. No, I believe in you. You're going to trade metal ingots for everything that you need. I'm not missing. I want to stuff a flamingo for Thanksgiving dinner with natural cheese friends. Boats. <laughs> Have you been drinking? <laughs> yeah, I need to find somebody around here that does have a milk cow. I didn't even think of that because then I could get some milk and start <laughs> iguana tails. Okay, good. I'm glad, Joe. Um, and at least try to make some cheese because I want to learn all of that. Because if I could, if I could fix the dairy issue for us, we'll be done. Because everything else we can pretty much, we either have a plan for in place or it's already there. I know Mike, he's funny, isn't he? He's, he is funny. I'm not a homesteader, I'm a prepper, but he's a lot of homesteading principles in a prepper way. It is a lot of the same skills, but the homesteaders need to learn. And is it prepper or is it bushcraft? There's my other question. Is it considered bushcraft or prepper? You know, to some people, people who do bushcraft are preppers and it may coincide together. But those and that's the whole thing about when you learn about all of these things is learning. Like when I'm learning fishing, I don't know if Chad's still here, but I'm starting to learn fishing and there's a vocabulary involved. There's a vocabulary involved in homesteading. There's a vocabulary involved in homesteading the old way in old fashioned ways and traditional ways. And there's a vocabulary in new ways of doing things. You know, um, a lot of people use, uh, like they use grinders to make sausage and they use uh, processing equipment and things that, oh, okay, Chad. <laughs> Hi, Wanda. Oh, yay, street copper. If you guys don't have street copper, he's just a fun channel to watch. He's like Ralph Morick. And, and um, I met him recently. He's, I just like his, his, uh, the way he does stuff. And he just doesn't even hesitate. Doesn't hesitate at working with that metal. I'm amazed at that. That is, that's a commitment. Anyway, so it was just a thought for me. You know, it's like I really, my, when I first started this, one of my first videos was Change Your Psyche. And it was probably way too long and I talked way too much. But, you know, when you do first videos, you're like, duh, duh, duh. and uh, um, <laughs> and uh, so it's uh, it's interesting, but you have to you have to really your whole thought process. If you live in the city and you're going to become a homesteader. And you're going to use things. <laughs> well, you better start learning to make beer then, Rick. Thank you, John, for sharing that. I do like the Street Copper channel, personally. Stone crabs are in season now in South Florida. I'm going to be setting it. Oh, I'd so love to have some. You have no idea. Hey! <laughs> Homesteading the hard way. Hi! Are you both here? I do bushcraft, but I also have a house prepared for a long haul without having to go into the woods. There you go. And see, you're welcome. And uh, I don't lie. <laughs> if I like something, I like it. You know, it's just. Uh, yay. Oh, great. Zach made it back. So 
I think that, and as you, as you progress in your home, when you start doing homesteading or farming or you move out to the country and you're a city person, but if you're a country person and you've grown up your whole life with all of it, there may be other skills that you need to learn that you didn't, you know, you, you know, you may need to learn about the new modern ways of doing the things you do at home. It's like when I first started talking about doing my chickens, right? Well, my whole thought was I'm getting a chicken plucker. Well, they're 400 and something dollars and I only had 20 something chickens and I wasn't quite ready to, it's expensive. So I wasn't ready to put all that money into it. I was going to try to do it uh, less expensively. And I was, I asked around town, I put it on my Facebook and I said, Hey, um, does anybody have a chicken plucker? Or know anyone that has one for sale. And you know, one of one of the ladies in town said, We get a bucket of hot water <laughs> and we stick them in there and then we pull them out and we pluck them. And I'm like, okay, I know that. I'm just saying I'm looking for the more modern way to do it. And then I got all these other messages of we just do this with them and throw them in the yard, you know, and and stuff like that. But the whole I think the whole thing in the modern homesteading side of it is doing it very simply, very cleanly, um, and very precisely, um, where there's not too much. Yeah. I thought about that. I thought about making one out of washing machine and I, I looked up all of that, but I think I'm just going to wait. Um, like I almost went to an auction, um, an auction a few weeks ago that had one and I didn't go, um, mainly because it was in the middle of nowhere uh, my husband uh, could not go with me. And for all of the guys in here that know country auctions, it's almost all men. And so for me, it was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. So in the middle of nowhere, it wasn't that I didn't trust anyone or anything like that. It was just kind of a weird feeling. So I didn't go. Um, okay. Bye, Ralph. Hey, J-Dub. Yeah, and and I did go ahead and plug mine. I, you know, harvested them, and I used cones that we made, and I had a big uh, turkey fryer water pot and dipped them in there, and I plucked all the feathers. Some of them I did skin, um, but it was after I plucked the feathers. I still plucked all the feathers. Um, so I did really good, you know, considering I'd never done that before. I ended up with over 200 pounds back there. Um, and chicken. I let him get a little too big, probably. He did. Thank you, Ralph. That was nice of you. It is a good group of people here. I can make, I can make a video on the way I do it, drill plucker. Okay, I tried that. And I think that would work. But it's really messy, Joe. And it gets in your face. Like, I made one, right? But I didn't secure the little flipper things well enough and one of them came off, but it still was hitting me in the face. And at the time I didn't have a, <laughs> I didn't have a face shield. If I would have had a face shield, I would have felt better, but I was getting feathers and stuff in my face. So I stopped doing that and just plucked in my hand. Hey, Trey, let me catch up here. Anyone else hungry? <laughs> hey, triple M shepherd's pie. Yes, it's very interesting plucking chickens. <laughs> I have to go back. I'm not a chicken plucker. I'm a chicken plucker's son. Say that one drunk now. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I don't know much other than how to make fat chickens and ducks. Yeah, I can, I can do that. I made them big. I think the last one. Hi, David. It was entertaining her and my oldest son put it together. Yes, we did. And and it was great. And we put it together and we glued it. And we were trying to figure out how to make it. And high dog bones. And it was and it and it would work. And I think I could use it next year if I only did like 10 chickens, but I need to really secure the little flippy things in there. Um, and I think it would work. But I still would need a face shield. Because I'm not into having little chicken feathers and skin and wetness and stuff 
flying at me in my hair. <laughs> so I have to figure out something else. I think we have 20. Yeah. It, in the washing machine one, is that what you did? Homesteading the hard way? I really think I could make wine. <laughs> LG Pass. <laughs> hey, Zapana. <laughs> no, I will use the videos. I just haven't done it yet. I have lots of video editing to do. That will be stuff that we did earlier in the spring, but it's still, you know, five gallon. That's really small. Is that just for... Uh, the five gallon, Judith, is that just for, uh, yes, Joe, exactly. That was what happened. The fingers hit my face. So I'll pass on that. Um, cause I didn't have it secured that well. Um, LG bass. It's not good for you to eat at McDonald's and eat chicken from um, not all the time. Just saying. Wrap them in bacon. I know that's what everybody says, but I wasn't. You got to understand. Okay. To understand who I was before I raised these chickens myself. Um, I, my entire life, um, probably from being around my papa and my uncles and everyone who did a lot of hunting and did a lot of that, was fairly traumatized to dead things. If there was something dead outside, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. It would actually give me a little bit of anxiety. That was the only, you know, everybody has their own anxiety things. Like they don't like snakes. They don't like this, that, and the other thing. I never had anything that like that except for dead stuff. Didn't matter what it was. If we would go to a uh, restaurant that had uh, like the mounted things, the like a deer head or ducks or whatever. I did not want to sit anywhere near them. It just made me extremely uncomfortable. So for me to move here and get to the point where I could raise and harvest my own chickens, that was a huge step for me. Huge. Ask my daughter. She's like, oh, my gosh. Yes, have to change the pillow to slow it down. Keep it on the spin cycle. Ooh, okay. No hormones. <laughs> Iguanas. Ten pound bag and fry them up at home. Okay, hold on, I'm missing somebody's stuff. I like to I like to learn some things about homestead life. I learned how to make candles, soap, beer. That's good. Okay, let me check it. Let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. I'm trying not to. Yeah, my yard looks like rabbit and chicken blew up. Yes, oh my gosh. It so looks like everything blew up. Bug out camp. We were talking about bag up, bug out bags the other day, JV, my husband and I. There's something else, though. There's a bug out bag. What did he call that? An inch bag. Have you heard of that? Have you guys heard of an inch bag? It's you're never coming back. And I don't know what the inch thing is about. I'm going to look it up. But they call it an inch bag, and it's not a bug out bag. It's it's bugging out is leaving your home, but you're thinking you're coming back. That's okay. That's all right. Um, loaded my fat little butt to go kill stuff. He did. My grandpa did do that, but I think I I think I was so sweet hearted when I was a little kid that maybe it upset me. Oh, hey, Drop. I'm glad you're lurking. Yeah, nobody's ever heard of an inch bag. I got to find out what it is because my husband was talking about it. I-N-C-H. Okay. I need to look that up, but that's what it's called is an inch bag. And that's you're never coming back ever to your house. You know you're never coming back. I'm going to look it up. So that's an interesting thing. We were talking about that. You know, when we pick up little things here and there, we, we aren't anywhere near um, where we probably should be. I mean, we're you figure where we live, we're pretty bugged out as it is if something weird happened. But, yeah, do you? Good. <laughs> that's good, Street Copper, because you should. For real, have a bag. 
I'm never coming home. Ah, I love you, Zach. You're so great. I didn't know what that meant. I wasn't even making that connection. Hey, Ace. So, never going home. You're never, I'm never coming home. So you have an inch bag and I'm never coming home. I know I'm not coming home. It's different than a bug out bag. A bug out bag is going to have some different stuff in it, right? So that's a new thing for me to learn. That might be on the list next year of, you know, what to have. But we're, like I said, we're pretty bugged out where we're at anyway. But I, th I do think that there's a, I think there's a misconception, honestly, out in the world of, what homesteaders are but if it gets younger people or people that live in the city to start changing their lives a little bit then it makes me happy i know my i know my uh, daughter-in-law has changed the way she looks at things because they watch homesteading videos all the time they watch uh they and my daughter here does of course um but they oh hey daddy, daddy duck i saw you and i didn't say hi hey matt Learning to cross the street for 20 years one day, I'll get it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I need to see what the list. Hi, Kennedy crew. Miss Judith, I want to know what the difference is. What, what, what are the differences in a bug out bag versus an inch bag? And that might be a, a video I do once I figure it all out. Because I think that's a good idea. Anybody can do it if they want. I do it too someday. Tim, you know, there's one right down the street and I do know a lot of stuff and I, and I do, um, I don't portray everything that I do understand and know how, have that skill. Um, that's just the way I am. You'll never know everything I know, <laughs> maybe over time, but you know, I can work on my own cars. I can do plumbing and framing and, uh, all of those things. I'm not a typical girl. We've always felt there's something wrong and slightly antisocial. On what, Ellie? I missed that. Why don't ducks look both ways before they duck across the street? I don't know. Hey, Chasing Tail Outdoors. Is it just like a bug, bat, bug out bag? Then why do they call it an inch bag? What are the differences in what goes in there? There has to be a difference, right? <laughs> Ace. Most people will not survive an extreme bug out situation. Yeah, possible. And I don't want, you know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> bug out bags can be heavy with all that you need. So if you're doing it, make sure you can carry it. Yeah. Gets me a week out. As a limited med kit with deal with my disability and emergency inch bag is set up for me to have the means to last indefinitely. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, we are antisocial. The world in general is pretty antisocial. That's why there's social media. And I and I don't know if that's considered antisocial, but I can tell you right now for the past year. Um, there's very few people that have come anywhere near this house. My daughter, my family. I can't think of too many. The UPS guy drops it off, doesn't even knock on the door. So we're, you know, fairly, and I guess we are fairly antisocial. We don't like have people over for dinner and things like that. We just don't do that. I think that is a good, good answer. I think if at the first we always joke about if anything ever happened because I have uh, I guess you would call it a massive hypo hypothyroidism condition where I take a very high dose of medication every day and um, so for me to go without that is a very bad thing <laughs> so um, that would be the first thing we would do. We both, have, my husband and I both have said it, we would go straight to any pharmacy around here and get all of the sense right. That would happen. And I always keep 
uh, extra supply. So now I used to not do that, but I do now. My hiking pack is basically an inch back. Okay. Most people should not carry more than 15% of their weight if obese 10% of their weight. Most carry can't carry 7% of their weight. Yeah, they gotta you gotta figure out what you can carry. <laughs> you know, it depends on how far you're having to go. It's like where we are, like I said, we're we're pretty out here. And if anything weird ever happened, we are we have enough people on that side of town and that side of town, everyone would block any way in that you could get into this town and everyone would protect each other. So I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's just the truth. I don't think anything like that would ever happen, but I guarantee you there'd be blockades <laughs> in a lot of small towns and rural communities. <laughs> Most people, okay. Thanks, Judith. That's why it's important to practice using your bug out bag. Make sure you have the skills to be able to use the stuff in it and you're able to carry it at least five miles a day. I always carry for a change in my pocket just in case. <laughs> I would honestly have to raid a medical warehouse facility. Average pharmacy doesn't. Oh, gotcha. Kidneys. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those. What do you do? Bug out or bug in? Yeah, bug in men. We're bugging in. I would think we'd bug in. Definitely start boarding up stuff and whatever we had to do. But yeah, so that was my that was my whole thought in in this live stream was you know we had all been talking about homesteading and what people really thought of it and and I really think there's people out there that that don't quite understand what it means. And and I think that there are people out there that have the skill set, like that live in the country, that have the skill set to do it all and they choose not to. Um, it's too much work for them. They don't want to. Hi Cam. Hello. Um, they don't want to. They don't want to have a garden. It's too much work. Um, they'd rather just go to the store and buy it, you know, but I can tell you Yeah, Ramsey Ridge. Oh, yeah, I bet you do. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Cody. Hi, After Five. Um, I, I think that, uh, and then there were other people here that said, why would I have a garden? I'd go over to the Amish and get it. Well, you might not be able to always. So you really need to at least know how and understand. And if you don't, I don't know. I just feel like you need to know how. Yes, they can, Miss Judith. Absolutely can. And knowing all of you now, you know, um, I think I could do that. So I just have to learn a little bit more. Um, I'm paved to explore. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. If there's anyone near me who raises rabbits and would not mind letting me checking out your rabbit setup, please send me an email or interested in raising rabbits. I bet we can find you somebody, sweetie. If there's not somebody in here now, I'm sure I can find someone. Hey, Gina. Gina B. Gina B. Da Vinci. I like saying that, too. I'm tired. Going to take a nap. I'll be back later. Okay. Thanks for coming in, John. Hi, Andy Davis. Andy Davis just harvested all his chickens. He did good. Is it just totally cold up there after five? Are you guys freezing to death? It's in Bobcat. <laughs> yeah. See, and I'm not there yet, Judith, but I think I could figure it out or over time I will. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure I'd figure it out. Yes. I mean, just growing stuff is fun. You know, it's it's sad when you make mistakes and it's sad when the bugs eat stuff. Oh, does he do rabbits? Big Joe's does? Okay. Um, Trey, Unpaved Explorer was trying to see if someone living near him, he's in Cleveland, Ohio, could let him come by and look at how they have a rabbit set up and things like that. Okay. No, I gotcha. We'll see you, Sir Chad.
Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody should have green all the time. You know, and I think there's some homesteaders that go a little far with a lot of their things. They go a little far and, and we get obsessive, some of us. It's not in a bad way. I don't think it's bad. I just think we get obsessive. Like I, the seed thing. Mm. Homestead chore videos. Would it be a chore video? Probably not yet. Boats, you know me. I, for the longest time, I have not put up a huge amount of videos. I've done a few. Um, but you'll start seeing them a lot more now. You know, um, I'm going to start really focusing on um, doing what I originally wanted to do. It's not big, Tim. I live in a small town and I have about three quarters of an acre. So it's not huge. And I have chickens now. And my daughter has two goats, a pig and a turkey, which is mine. And I want to get him over here. And I have a friend that's giving me some turkeys. Um, so he has wives, but I have to get all that set up. But if we would have known, um, if we would have known what we were going to get into when we first moved here, we probably would have looked for a bigger place. We would like to have more land now. So that that's a big thing. Okay. I need to answer. We are going to do the raised beds like Tubby guys outdoors. I have started a couple of raised beds out there just because my garden is a mess and I am going to try to what they call, um, uh, Oh my gosh, what is their name? Doug and Stacy, um, which is another homesteading channel, but they're off grid. Um, they call it aging in place. And that is really something people need to think about. Raised beds are better for someone that's older. Um, and so when we started doing this garden, um, the plan was to do certain things, but I need to have raised beds too. So that if I get to the point where I can't get down in the dirt and crawl around in the garden and all that stuff that I have raised beds to grow things in. Um, how many chickens do you raise to harvest every year? This is the first time I've done it. Um, I started with 27 and I lost three. It was really hot and that's part of it. I lost three out of the 27, which wasn't horrible. And, but I, two of them were heat and I think an Eagle took one. <laughs> Uh, I raised them and they went, a, well, half of them went over nine weeks. They were probably to 10 weeks and I had some really large chickens. Um, so for just us two, um, that those 24 chickens that we did, that'll last us over a year. I can take half of a chicken and make four or five meals out of it. So, um, it's, a like I can take one chicken breast and get two meals. Yeah. And sometimes a little bit, you know, like I can take one quarter section with a thigh and a leg and make a pot of soup this big that'll make God knows how many meals. So my house. Oh, shoot. Okay. Let me go back a little bit. Bear with me, guys. So answer that one. Majority of snow went south of us. Okay. That's what I was wondering, Cody. I'm paved explore. Go check my YouTube. I raise rabbits. My main food supply. Oh, that's cool. Thank you, Joe, for helping John out. Okay, bye, JV. Hi, the Swedes. Thank you for coming by. That's so sweet of you to come by. I'm going to build a smokehouse. It's coming spring. And get a hog. You know, we talked about getting a hog. We've talked about that quite a bit. No, I couldn't keep bison boats. I don't have enough land. Um, and we can actually buy it cheaper, already processed, organic. We found a place to get it. And we don't eat that much pork. So um, we decided against pigs going forward. If anything, we'll get a cow. And always do chickens. And I don't know if I can do rabbits. <laughs> I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, okay, let me go down a little bit so I'm not missing anybody. Oh, turkeys. 
Yeah, smokehouse carrying is a lost art. Yeah, I'm not even there. We did 22 chickens and got 136. See, and I did 24 and got over 200 pounds. So mine were huge. They were just big. And I'm not sure why they were so big because I didn't let them go that far. But I had some that were nine pounders. They were like turkeys. They were huge. Those were the last probably five or six. They were like 10 weeks old. They were gigantic. Yeah, see, I don't know if it was what I was feeding them or how I was feeding them or whatever, but they were happy. They were, I mean, they were really, they were happy chickens. I have to say they were happy and I took care of them and they ate well and they drank well and I, they got lots of grass because they were out on the grass in the chicken tractor. And so, you know, one pound a week after like four weeks. Yeah, mine were, mine were big and I'll, and I'll have some videos up. My, my stuff is going to be a little bit behind, but it's because I get caught up in, you guys know I'm around everywhere. And, and I get caught up in my own deficiencies of editing or that I don't feel like it's edited well enough. And so then I put it aside and go, okay, I'll add something to that later. And so I'm just going to take it all. I'm going to start adding what I wanted to add and just start loading stuff with the understanding that, hey, this was in the spring. Six, six. Yeah, ours was like nine, two. Our biggest one was like nine two, but we decided if we do it again, we're only doing 10 at a time. And even if we have to do it a couple of times a year, yes, happy meat. Um, and because that chicken tractor, we really was, we felt like was too small for 24 chickens, 27 chickens. It was not big enough to us, but we did let them go a little longer. We felt like, like they got big quick. So I don't know if it was just that particular group of chickens or yes, water. I was out there four or five times a day. I'd rather, ooh, let me go back. Except the wet butt. I don't know what the wet butt's about. Okay, I guess that's a honey thing. Rabbit poop is good for the garden. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you can put it straight in. That's my understanding. You don't have to let it com compost, Cecilia. Rather hunt or pork means traveling out of state. You don't have many in Ohio. A YouTube print that has a hydroponic channel if anyone is interested in that. In the house or in outside? Whoop. Hold on, let me go backwards. Miss Gina. Yes, 22 chickens, five. Oh, yeah, at least. Oh, at least. <laughs> yeah, that boat, yeah. They were. And, and, and it's, you know, I. I had the understanding for myself as these chickens are not and people will argue that point all day long that these particular types of chickens um, can be chickens that you keep forever but most of the time they aren't they grow too fast their bones will get brittle they will suffer and I had to keep that in my mind that if I kept any of them you know, I bought them to raise them for me. If I kept any of them, it would be the wrong thing to do. Um, so. Hear that. Lola, what's up? No. Come here. Come here. Yeah, that's really awesome of you, Joe. Hold on. I may mute you just because she's loud. Ellie, can you hear me? Can you go see what's going on outside, please? Because the dogs are all going off. Andy's doing 50 chickens in the spring and 50 more in the fall. How many people do you have, Andy? Oh, no. Cody, I'm so sorry. As long as the, dry, as long as the rabbit poo's dry, like you don't want to put wet rabbit poo. Chickens with walking sticks. Exactly. Tussle. 
Oh, okay. Um, let him know Ross is asleep if he's coming over here. And I'm on a live stream, please. That's awesome, Andy. It's awesome that she knows how to do it. Okay. My dog is barking at your dog. Did he bring you food or something, Ellie? That's so funny. See, now I got a picture of drawing a chicken with a walking stick. That's hilarious. Give them away too. See, I had some people talk to me in town about, you know, they asked me about how the chicken thing went and I went, it was good. You know, it was my first time doing it and it went pretty well. And they said, you know, let us know when you're doing that and we'll buy some. So I thought about looking into that of what would the cost be? What would I have to do? You know, if they bought the chickens and um, then I just fed them and harvested them for them. You know, would that be okay? But with them having the upfront cost of the chickens, half page chickens. <laughs> That's funny. I think that's so cool. I would have loved to have learned a little more about. I wish I would have been that kid that could have handled that where I could. I mean, he would, my grandpa would show me how to do it, but I was like, ew, I don't want to do that. I used cones. Yeah, definite cones. And not removing the first 10. We, I'm sorry if anybody is squeamish about this. Um, the first 10, we did remove the head completely. And that was disastrously messy. So we didn't do that after that. We did the, um, you do a certain type of cut. I think so. Um, unless I could see us doing that. Um, I don't know yet. It would depend on what all happens here with other things happening, Cecilia, because we may have access to stuff that's around us or um, be able to put a cow somewhere, that kind of stuff. So um, if we if we have if we have access to where we could stay, not have the extra expense of another piece of land, we probably would stay and just rent land or borrow it or buy something cheap. Yeah, and I do that, Jake. Um, I bought those, but they were small. I'm going to get the bigger size next time just in case mine are bigger. Um, but I mean, if I raise people eight, nine pound chickens, I just have to look at the whole cost of it and if it's worth me doing it. Yes, Andy, and that's what I was trying to say earlier. Um, I think modern homesteading is more try to make it as humane, humane and clean and not as messy and no matter what you do it's still going to be messy hi full-time dream yes i so think a chicken plucker is worth it so i probably will get one i'm just not there yet because we just have so much right now and so I thought, you know, yes, turkey size bags. <laughs> Jake, seriously, they were huge. I had to cut them in half. Like, I couldn't get them in the bag. I had to break them down and fillet them all. Not all of them, but the bigger ones. I had to fillet them because they wouldn't fit in the back. Okay, John, thank you so much for coming by, and I'm glad Joe was able to help you. Yes drop exactly that's what we were thinking have this and then have another piece of land somewhere maybe with a cabin or just close by here where we could go yeah jake i thought about building my own 
that's the whole modern thing in my head is I can just go buy one. But my first thought was building like the bucket ones and then homesteading the hard way was in here. They were in here and said, you know, they did one out of a washing machine. Yes, they do. Um, and it's honestly, uh, showing everything is not something we started to do the filming. Uh, because I had friends ask me to go ahead and show everything that I did. And this first time I did not, it was, it was hard on me and my grandson, the first 10 we were, whether anybody understands, but it was emotional for us, you know, and then after that I was fine doing them by myself, but the first 10 was real emotional for him and I. Beer brats, <laughs> Jamie. Bear brats actually don't sound bad. I think we're having sandwiches when I get done here. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Bye, John. I know I said that already. But... They put up a fight. <laughs> See, and that's another thing. You know, you want to buy. You want to. You can't have everything. You know, and er when you see some of the homesteaders that have been doing it for a really long time or people that have lived in the country for a really long time and they have a lot of the tools, a lot of the machines, a lot of everything that they need to. To do what they need to do, you know, I'd love to get a grinder and I know my daughter has one, but I don't know if it does sausage, maybe. Um, and she has some of that stuff, you know, already, but I'd like to have my own, like I have my own dehydrator. Okay, Zach, thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate your input, dude. I can't wait to see your live streams. I'm ready to see them. See how that goes. Oh. See, and that's the whole thing. You know, you've really got to commit to, you've got to commit to it and understand what you're doing, you know. And and it's like uh, people kind of giggled at me because the last four or five, they knew, you know, they knew what was going to happen. They didn't exactly know probably, but they were probably a little freaked out, you know. And I talked to them. Talk to them, calm them down so that they didn't get upset and hurt themselves because they were, they will get upset and hurt themselves, especially the bigger chickens. But yeah, so, so that was the whole, that was the whole purpose of this whole live stream. Okay. See you later, Evan. Yes. Everybody learn from me. And if you guys, I mean, I don't know at what stage you're at, but if I can, if I can give you any kind of advice on things from what I've learned, you guys can message me anytime. Like, Hey, Mo, we had this issue. Do you know what this is? So you don't have to go hunt it down and find it in a video somewhere. I have no problem trying to answer anything I can. Most grinders for home use will come with a sausage horn. And I'd really like to get one to make brats with. Now, it might be chicken brats or turkey brats. It might not be pork, but I'd like to have something like that, too. He does. Yeah, I'm ready to see the he's doing that something new, Jake, and I want to see that. Yeah. It's just it's and there's there's a learning process to make it faster, more efficient in harvesting anything. Yeah, Ellen does have one. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. That's probably a good idea, Tom Bone. <laughs> I know everybody tries to take Ellen's goats all the time. It's like, well, just you want to sell that goat? <laughs> no. What are you going to do with it? Eat it? No. You can't have pepper. <laughs> pepper is not an eating goat. Pepper is a good mama goat, and pepper needs to have more babies. 175. Well, did you look at reviews and stuff, Andy, and all of that? If you did, send me what you end up, or do a video on what you end up buying. I'd love to see. 
Oh, see, I made I made them out of five gallon buckets. The cones. I made plastic ones, and that worked just fine. That was perfect. Goat brats. <laughs> yeah. People do that, but you know, I'm not there yet either. Sure. Don't, just tell somebody I you're not a mod, Andy. So um if Evan's still here or Judith, they can find it if it's already on your page. Just tell them what it is. It's like a 19... Oh, it's from 1960? Oh, no worries, Street Copper. I'm glad you were able to come in here. This is a good group of people, and I like... You know, that's one thing about my live streams. I'm not going to put us in a box. I may be talking about homesteading, and we may have a lot of outdoors channels and stuff, but I won't always talk about homesteading. Yeah, you're not a mod. <laughs> I don't make very many mods. Hey, BFO. Is this stream Mills inspired? Partially, yes, BFO. Partially. Yeah, I only have like 15 mods, and I'll probably keep it that way for a while. I'm not big on the whole make everybody a mod just because. I never have been. It is. I've never, I've, I've, I know I've eaten lamb and goat because gyros or gyros or whatever is made out of lamb. I'm pretty sure not about goat, but um, just haven't ever. I wouldn't, I'd have to have somebody cook it for me that knew how to do it. I'll go visit Judith. Taste some different things. I don't know if Judith knows how to do goat. Wow, that's awesome though. Good job on getting the deer. Okay, cool. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Raymond. Oh, I knew Raymond was still here. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy Dawn. Are you Jimmy Dawn? You are. <laughs> click me. Mo, click me. J-Dub, you're already a mod. Hush it. Look up. Okay. Lend me processing equipment. Okay. Really? Would you really, Ellen? Come on. You never talked to me about that. But I remember... You're not eating pepper. <laughs> Pepper's mine. <laughs> Even though she lives over there. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm claiming her animals. <laughs> Pepper's mine. Oh, poo, blueberry. I know one thing. I may run down to where J-Dubs is next year when they have blueberry harvest and just round it up. Oh, Andy, um, Raymond got it. It's up there. And, yeah. Lem. Boar goats are good. Yeah. It's like, I thought you guys were going to go ahead and to where Pepper could have babies this year. I guess they decided, you decided not to do that. And you don't have to tell me why. I'm just saying, just say, yeah, we decided not to do that. Or are you going to go ahead and do it? Yeah. War. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I'm still going to come down and raid. <laughs> I can still come right. <laughs> cool. That'll work. Yeah, it's and and I felt like we if we would have kept trying with the like when Ellen was making the goat cheese, she would have found a good balance. We want to just haven't been picked up to breed yet. Okay. Hey, hey, Dan. No. I don't respect the tail. I don't know who you are. Who are you? <laughs> I have to go look at the channel. Did you change your name? 
Mo raid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A mo raid. Drive by and pick up a couple of people. Go down and raid J Dubs. Okay. Night in. Actually in the house now. Just eight. <clears throat> is there oh oh what time is that? Don't talk too much about it though, BFO, but what time is that at? <clears throat> Gotta run the city life ain't for me. <laughs> Whatever. Bob, you're so silly. <clears throat> <clears throat> Got a can of Lena goat. Cheap beard and barbecue. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even know what to do. Hey Shan! <laughs> hey Reb, I call her Shan. She calls me Dan, I call her Shan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nubian is supposed to be the best, like the sweeter, higher. I think it's higher in fat and sweeter. Okay, did I miss who Respect the Tail is? Do I know Respect the Tail and they changed their name? Someone please tell me. Because I don't know. I've been too busy this week. You'd be an alpine. Yeah. So I feel like, I felt like the milk was really good. I didn't feel like it was bad. It just, there was, I felt like my daughter's goats, the milk was better than the milk we got from who she got the goats from. So I don't know if that's because of different food that she fed them or, or what. Josh Bass and Beans, Josh? Josh, you're so funny. Why don't you tell me when you're doing stuff like that? <sighs> He'll message me at 1 in the morning wondering what my draw, bow draw is, but he won't tell me. He started another channel. Is that who that is? Okay. No, not at all. Uh -uh. And, and, you know, I always, I'll always have different things that we'll talk about. Yeah, you're grounded. You're just grounded, Josh. <laughs> you're grounded. I can ground you. You're like, well, are you 21 now? What? Milk goat breed that doesn't have ears? Ellen, is there a milk goat breed that doesn't have ears that you know of? Doesn't have ears. Are you being silly? <laughs> you being silly, doggone. See, and you know what, Street Copper, I have to, I have to totally not, I have to live vicariously through you and, um, and Ralph because I will want to melt metal so i have to be careful i have way too many things that i can do i need to not get into that <laughs> la mancha it has no ears is that a is that a goat though is a la mancha a goat we tried to cook some it tastes like pine straw then they cooked it. Best meat ever. Oh, really? Yeah, I thought you were close, Josh. I knew you were almost 21. I'm going to go look at his at Deer Park. Watch, I have no ears. I love his turkeys. Known for its much reduced external ears. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Do what you know. Yeah. Gina, I, ha I, from an art medium standpoint, I have so many options. And if I go do another one, that's a whole nother set of, hi, Mama Dawn. That's a whole nother set of equipment, a whole nother set of stuff. And I don't have room for the stuff I got now. So I have to be really careful not to go wanting to do that too. 
because I guarantee you I could find all the aluminum I wanted to. I could just tell people around here that I need cans. And lots of people drink beer every single day. I'd be like, I'll melt you. If you bring it over, I'll melt it. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to look at those. Ellen, have you ever looked at La Mancha's? I am. I'm not going to do melting stuff, though, but I I promise I'm doing art soon. I promise. Promise, promise. Although it's been six months. Yes. Yes, exactly, Shan. Every other week, wanting to get a whole new set of stuff and do a different kind of art. Yep. I mean, I've got stuff to do. I've got the tools to do. Mosaic, also with glass, fused glass. Um, we were talking about ordering me some clay to do giveaway pieces like um, fish and different things for giveaways because I can do those, the little small ones. I can do little figuring things or wall hangings or stuff like that. I've got stuff to do jewelry. I've got stuff to do painting and sculpture and, 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 <laughs> and it's everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, cleaning kids. What was the question? Have you ever looked at La Mancha goats? Ojusan wants more art. Yes, he does. I need to just just set some stuff up. Maybe next week when we do a live stream, I'll just set it up and go hang out with him or have him hang out with me. Cross out of metal, melted beer cans. Yeah. Fake mosaic. What's fake mosaic? Oh, cool, Jake. Yeah, I need to go look at his. Might have to drive 2,500 miles to pick up those cans. <laughs> no, we need to look at those. Those are interesting. I would switch back so I don't, con I should switch back so I don't confuse people. Well, if people want to come get your channel and they know you and get your new channel, but yeah, you should come back to Bass and Beans. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I need to just set it up and do a painting or something just for fun, just to get going. Final polymer clay, airbrushing, jewelry, sewing, woodworking, and furniture. Yeah, 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 I know. See, and I want to do screen printing. No doubt. Pardon me. Ant mound poor sell for big money. Well, and that's if you could find those kind of ant. I can't find them here, but that would be fun to me. Hey, sis. <laughs> hey, still. <laughs> Kikos. Now, but Kikos are meat goats or milk goats? I can't remember because I know Arms Family Homestead has Kikos. Oh, I gotcha. Gosh, doing the mosaic might have been easier. That's cool, though. How fun. Are you filming that? Film it. Put a GoPro on your head. <laughs> meat. Kiko or meat. Okay. So what are the different? So we, so our La Mancha and La Mancha are milk, right? Or La Mancha meat. Lonnie's still here. John, hunting and stuff with Jane J. Are you still here? Yeah, it takes so much time to kind of figure out what you want to do. It's one of those, you know, some people believe in. Yes, I think it would have been, especially if you did like crazy tile stuff where it didn't have to be perfectly precisioned, but you could still buy the tiles even if you didn't do that. Most production goats are meat goats. I'm not familiar with that type of goat. Okay, I'm not either. Oh, I just see Shan when I see anything rib. <laughs> That's what I just see Shan. So I need to get that channel, too, just in case you do decide to split it. 
well, then I can come visit you. You know how easy we could do that, Judith? All we need is a burner. We can get the, um, what's that called? I can't remember the thing, what it's called. And just throw the metal in there, pick it up, with, pour it in, done. That's how easy that is. You melt cans. Specific MCM precise look. I gotcha. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. There you go, Josh. <laughs> I want goblins. <laughs> you don't have to move. <laughs> You could get, see, the thing with goats is you can't just have one. Crucible. Thank you, Raymond. I love my friends that know that I go completely brain dead when I get on this video. Um, Crucible. Yeah, Judith, just, we just get a crucible, the right size, melt the, skim it off, pour it in there, and dig it up. And we'd be done. That's how easy those are. You just melt aluminum cans. Mm hmm Crystal. She's in there licking her feet, I guarantee you. On my couch. Every time. <laughs> Night LG Bass. Thanks for coming in and hanging out with us. I appreciate it. I'm hoping everybody enjoyed it. It seems like we're we were staying pretty active in the conversation. Moving on almost an hour and a half. But things will, the art stuff is over the winter is definitely going to change. I'll be doing a lot of different art things and then, um, and different things in the kitchen and that kind of thing. Two houses in Winston. There was a big, awesome one in Missouri, three hours from you, but still. And I'm like, oh, go. Well, like I told you, that one house that was in town that sold, sold for $11,000. And it's not a bad house. It wasn't a bad house. If I would have, if I would have really thought about it and known that it was open, I probably would have bought it. There are bids on YouTube on earless goats. I'm going to go find some dog bones. Is he going to a show in Colorado? Are you going to a show in Colorado? Where you're selling your knives or are you just going hunting? Okay, Cecilia, thank you. The one thing about chickens, though, I have to tell you, Shannon, is you, you have to, you want to buy so many. But we have eight, and it's more, and, and not all of them lay because two of them are older. So we don't get eight eggs a day, but it, let's say on average we get six eggs a day or seven. Well, I'll say seven. Seven eggs a day for two people. And, you know, yeah. Hey, Jake, I wonder if you burn the cans first, like if you just threw them in a fire for a little while and burn some of the paint off if you have as much paint slag it might be and then wash them off nubians are dual purpose meat and excellent milkers i didn't know nubians were meat too see i need to do some research on goats just for the heck of it can't even buy a new car that cheap here in connecticut for eleven thousand. Yeah, house. And and the thing about it is, is it, it was an older house, but it had a big lot. It did have some plumbing problems that they, oh, that'll be fun, dog bone. It, it did have some plumbing problems that they corrected and some cosmetic problems. But overall, I don't think that house was in bad shape. Ellen, do you know the one that uh, uh, Jim's son bought? I think that's who bought it. Hey, Jeremy, did I say hi? <laughs> Better to find small pieces of angling scrap. I'm sure people have that stuff laying around also. Hey, Outdoors Addiction. Yeah. True. Because 
it it's not that it's a huge amount of it having just a few chickens is not a huge amount of work but it is it, it's a timing thing because you can't leave you've got it for me anyway and i think in town it might even be more dangerous with raccoons and possums because they'll eat them raccoons and possums will eat them and hurt them and kill them <laughs> we have fort knox of you know get through this door get through that door get through this door and i have to lock them up and let them out lock them up at night let them out every day Fight a bunch of drunks over for a campfire and tell them to chuck cans in the fire exactly just did what did i just do <laughs> hit bars first yeah Four years old and probably weighed 200 pounds. Wow. Wow. Yeah, raccoons and possums, then chickens are, you, you'd have to make sure that you have a very secure coop because it would be awful, I can tell you. If that ever happened to me here, I would just fall over. And, and I'm lucky. Call Trapper J. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did say, hey, okay. <laughs> Hi, like a bully. Um, because you'd have to totally secure because they will get in there. Yes, owls will eat them too. If, see, ours is where my coop is, is there's a chicken run. There's two big, there's a little tree here and a big, huge tree that goes over the whole top of this big, huge chicken run. Inside this chicken run, there's a 10 by 10 dog pen that has a roof wiring all uh, hardware mesh all around the top. And it has metal uh, tin sheathing across the bottom. And then there's a middle section that we're going to do something with over the winter. We wrapped it last year. I'll show you guys a video on that soon because we'll do it again this year in a different way. But then inside the 10 by 10 dog pen, there is another coop that I built that they sleep inside and lay their eggs inside. And at night, I lock them in the little coop on the inside, lock the dog pen, and then there's a six-foot perimeter fence around this dog, around this run with a big, huge gate in the back that they're locked in. So it's, and, the, and it's buried under the ground like, I'm going to say three inches, four inches. Used to do stuff like that with aluminum, but it's easier to find. Okay, yeah. I guess I built my coop well enough. Keeps mine safe when something was after them last week. That's awesome. Everything likes chicken. Yeah. Oh, is it? Trey, I need to see what's going on. It's raining hard. Does it say it's coming this way, like it's coming down? Ellen, it's not raining, is it? Trey's just a couple hours north of us. It's it is Jake Small Pistons work. Piston S work. Pistons work. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I have a friend on here that lives in a in a a pretty normal community suburb type of place and they got and they got chickens well they've already caught like four raccoons because the raccoons were trying to get in and so they it just flipped a switch really what the heck i didn't know we were supposed to be getting anything i'm hoping we don't i don't want any, it's wet out there Yeah, and let me know when you get ready to, and I'll come up or come down, and I'll help you. And you can ask me questions. No rain here until, I think, tomorrow night. Yeah, and I don't see any weasels around here. The biggest, well, you know, Judith, you probably know, but what we saw were foxes. Foxes and... Um, coyotes now there was a big huge gigantic raccoon roadkill less than a block away from the house so we know we have raccoons around here but there is um, some people that do trapping here 
and I am pretty sure if anybody saw possums, because there are a lot of people in town that have chickens, if anybody saw possums or raccoons, I think they'd take care of it. Not until 7.30, is he? If he is, we're going to go raiding, Raymond. Is he? Oh, that's a cute little thing. I haven't even seen that. That freaks me out. Do we have those in Oklahoma? I don't know. Moving northeast. Oh, well, good. That's not me. I thought he was going at 730. If he's live, then we're going to... We're going to raid him. 30 pound coon after my rabbits when I first moved out here. Yeah, I mean, the, and the thing is, they don't eat them. And the possums don't eat them. I think they just eat the eggs and stuff, but then they hurt the chickens. It is not nice. Lola, I hear you. Come here. Somebody tell me. You know what's funny? I don't even, I, if I do that pop-out chat, I don't even have to leave that other thing running, the other tab running. I can just have the pop-out chat running. No, not yet. Just a reminder. Okay. Yeah, JJ's going to go live. Hunting and stuff with JJ is going to go live at 730, so we'll probably raid him in a little bit. Yes, I love Eyeball Guy, but I, I love Pizza Guy. I want a Pizza Guy t-shirt. Because I loved the pizza guy. Lola, you want to come in here? Come in here, baby. I know you've been over there licking your feet. She's got her head down. She's like, Mommy. You've been licking your feet? Eh? Huh? Yes. They will. And I don't understand why they do that. It's like, why? For what reason? Missouri has brown. She's in Oklahoma, Judith. Miss Shan, Miss Reb, no fun art is in Oklahoma. I can't see. I can't see you having weasels in town there, though. <laughs> Thank you, Monty. Oh, good, Daylene. I didn't know what your name was. That's a pretty name. Well, you could make me one and send it to me. Or bring it to me. Well, don't bring it to me with everything going on, but you could send it to me. I would wear it on my live stream. Be neck, please. <laughs> okay, Street Copper. We're going to be here for about another. 20 minutes, and then we're going to raid hunting and stuff with J&J. &J. And then I'm going to go lock up my chickens. <laughs> and I'll probably be over there for a little bit. Really? Weasels? I've never seen weasels. I've seen their hats. possums. <laughs> <laughs> they eat stuff they do okay okay they do possums will eat ticks and bugs and things like that in your neighborhoods and stuff but if you anybody has chickens they better lock them up good okay like a bully <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, 20 minutes. So we'll hang out for a little bit and then we'll go over there. That's a plan. Because I thought he was going at 730. That's why I went at 530. I figured two hours for me is probably good. The five and seven hour live streams are a little much for me. <laughs> and I'm going to try to have, you know, as I gear these up and get used to 
the timing and how I can get set up and get in here and talk to everybody. I'll do panels a little bit and all with artwork and other kinds of stuff. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hi, Emma K. What's your number today? I don't know your number today. 950. Shan, go, uh, M&K Outdoors is a fishing channel, um, and they're trying to hit a certain number. Go over there and, like, pick them up so you get, so you're, like, subscribed. Because they're getting there really quick. Yes, I'm pretty. That's getting there. Yes. <laughs> So does Oji-san. <laughs> I just have to get, you know me. She knows me. I'm trying. Oh, no. Boats is back. 2,500 hours. You're, it's going to go really quick. Okay. They're just sweethearts. Oh, I'm going to have to clean her ears. She's shaking. Oh, it's no worries. I was just making sure you were still there. I didn't know if you were going at, I, I thought you were going at 730, John. And then um, Raymond said, uh, is, is, J, is JJ live? And I'm like, no, he wasn't supposed to go till 730. <laughs> Weasels are small. The stretcher boards are about the, about the size of a ruler. <sighs> A stretcher board thing is an interesting thing. And that's just to stretch the hides out so they lay flat. I need to watch more stuff. Oh, it's your funny, by the way. Okay. Yes. There will be more art. I already have an idea for some stuff, so I'm wanting to, and I have someone wanting me to paint something, so I just need to get myself organized with everything going on here, and then I can do that. But I need to just set it up and get it done before the day I'm going to do it, or the hour before. I need to just set it up. I did that. And now my cat is stuck, or nobody's talking, which is possible. We did hit 7 o'clock. Everyone left. <laughs> I know. It's like, it, I need to just set it up and know and get my paints over here and sit here and do something you know or whatever hey david hey Raymond. <laughs> evil monkeys yeah i need to because everybody wants to sit and do art and odisan does like an hour at a time so he could come online for an hour and do his you know do a, a painting in digital and uh and then somebody else could come up or do two or three at a time or whatever. Because I think if I do it, I have to have two, two spaces. And then if Ojasan does it, I think he has to have two spaces. So if you have form for drawing, okay. So I think everybody would be two spaces. Maybe, maybe not. I'll have to figure it out. Mine would be weird. Because I haven't figured that out yet. Oh, OG songs. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, sis. <laughs> He's on. Um... Oh, I bet you did. Yeah, he does. Um, he does quite a bit. Um, he's almost always on at ten o'clock every morning. Pretty close to it. 
and then he gets on late at night sometimes too when he he does like Bob Ross stuff in the morning and then he does his more what he calls creepy stuff at night. It's an obsession. He's, he's done like six or seven different drawings today or more. How many have you done today, Jimmy Don? John, are you up? Are you in there? Eight. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I was close. Six or seven. Now you're on eight. He's done eight drawings today, Shan. Eight. <laughs> Probably all production quality. Every single one of them. Right. Probably. That's probably it. Come here, Lola. Hanging and stuff with Jay and Jay. <laughs> Wonder if he can hear me. <laughs> Lola just walked in here and burped. I'm serious. He gets on that thing and he, that, that's what the digital, he does the digital, to, you know, and he just goes at it. He's very focused. He can usually get one done to his liking in an hour. Sometimes a little less, but most of the time in an hour. Yes, she's awesome. She got in trouble the other day. She tried to bolt out the front door when Ross walked out, and I got her. And she, I made her sit in one place for like 10 minutes in timeout. She was like, oh, mama's mad. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm an Aries. I can only stay focused for an hour at a time. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, we're just eating sandwiches tonight, so I don't have to cook. <laughs> we got some, uh, I think we got roast beef and turkey. We're just going to have sandwiches. I love the animation stuff you're doing, Shan. It's really good. It is good. John. We're losing people, bud. He can't hear me. I'm down to 17, so I hate to raid with just a few people, but we're going to raid him anyway when he gets going. Oh. I know Shan's seen this, but I don't know if OG Son has. Oh, I made pork stir fry rice, fried rice and rice stir fry. Pork stir fry and rice. Oh, oh my gosh, it's broken. The feather, the OG Son. <laughs> Look, this was a skull study we did, and it's got little marks and scratches and stuff, and the flowers broken, but. You know what I did on the teeth? I used uh, glass paint so they'd look more rubbery. <laughs> and I did this 10 years ago, and that paint has not moved. Now, it got chipped traveling, which is sad, but I can touch it up and fix it. But what do you think of that guy? It was a skull study on how to make skulls in class. Oh, hear it inside? He can't see us. He's lurking. Is that my skull? No. I didn't do bad. 
chin's a little short. Forehead's a little short, but measurement wise, it's correct. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, that was way back when. It's heavy. Where are we going? We're going to hunting and stuff with J&J &J very shortly. As soon as he opens up his page. He starts at 7.30. Nothing left, Shan. Boo. Oh, yeah, they eat all of it. Yeah, I just, yeah, I hope they're fake too. <laughs> That'll be fun. Hopefully they're fake. You have to call me and let me know if they're fake. <laughs> oh. Hey, Raymond, can you go ahead and share the link to JJ? And because it's already there, if people wanted to go hang out over there, they could. But we're going to raid him in about eight minutes. <laughs> Cecilia has food, Chan. <laughs> she lives about 3,000 miles from you, but <laughs> she definitely does. Yeah, I'm hungry. I'm going to, when we get done, I'm going to um, go lock up the chickens and let Lola run <laughs> run around a little bit and then get a sandwich but i'll go raid jj first and hang out in there for a second and then go do that because i forgot to lock up my chickens last night we were so distracted we didn't lock them up till 11 30. so lucky okay i'll see you later judith thank you for hanging out this whole time thank you 23 kc how many likes do we have do we get a bunch or just like i can't see that I'll be up for a few. I'm sure they are. I'm kidding. They're awesome, though. Teacup sculptures. By the way, they're chicken breasts. Oh, okay. I don't know. That'd be fun, though, making stuff with teeth in it. I think. Somebody tell me how many thumbs up we got. Do we get thumbs down too? Probably. Yeah, there's always one. It, it makes me wonder if there's just not someone that runs around or if YouTube does it themselves to make the percentages different. Yeah, always one. There's always at least one. And then normally later after the video's up for a while. I'll either get between two and seven. <laughs> Is that JJ's? Okay. So where we're rating, he's, I don't know if he's live yet, but, it, but that's the link to it because he did a, like a pre setup, but that is the link to JJ's. Sorry, 53 up, one down. Oh, gotcha. That's all right not horrible I think we had a good live stream I think everybody hung out and and talked about the, the subject and we all talked about homesteading and how we felt about it and bug out bags and all that kind of stuff so I was pretty happy with it I'll have to think of something really good for us to chat about but there's a lot of stuff going on tonight too I bet some of the live streams are a little low there's stuff on TV, right? <laughs> well, there's Trapper Jay. <laughs> We're leaving in five minutes. Were you sleeping? <laughs> he was sleeping. We're going over to uh, John's at Honey and Stuff with Jane Jay here in about six minutes. Lola. It will have another one because I'm probably going to do one on what should be in it. 
and start and make a running list and have all the prepper guys come in and the outdoor guys come in the bushcraft and have them tell us what they would have in their bag. And everybody has a video on that. You know, most of the bushcrafters and that kind of stuff of what, Oh, did you, <laughs> who won? Did you guys win? Jay? I think this might be Monday from five to seven. And Thursday from 5 to 7, it might be one I do. I know Monday's for sure. It feels comfortable at 5. Mike's the Boy Scout, so he's the one who handles all that. Oh, oh yay! Woohoo! That's so cool. So now you're going to McDonald's? <laughs> McDonald's or Burger King, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad they won. That's cool. Yeah, we pick up stuff all the time, Shan, at like Harbor Freight. We'll just pick up little things. Like I have a machete. <laughs> I don't know if it's any good, but I have one. <laughs> and we have like striker things for fire and little things like that. Lola, what are you doing? Yeah, I know. I used to not like them, uh, but they've gotten a lot better lately. I got it in there. That'll work. Are you live? Is that a I'm live wave? <laughs> you need three of an item. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> three ways to start a fire. Oh, true. You need three of an item. Why is it going to be a long night? Are you tired? <laughs> you didn't sleep today, Jay? Okay, I'm going to say Honey and Stuff with Jay and Jay is probably live or close to it. Turning our van into a bug out van. There you go. That's a way to do it. No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> Well, hurry up. <laughs> it was a mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> the way it was. <laughs> He's over here doing this. <laughs> I just want to win a bago. Small one, but a Winnebago where I can drive around and not have to stay in a hotel someday. Maybe that'll be in a couple of years. <laughs> John, you're slow. Hurry up. You have one minute. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Anybody who can hear my voice, there's I'm going to put a link in. We're going to go over and raid JJ and say Mo Raid and hang out there for a little bit. That's the plan. It's a Mo Raid. Poor Life's Chicken Press for dinner, so enough for poor people come and get it. <laughs> Hi, Tubby. We're just getting ready to go run uh, raid JJ. We just finished up, honey. 
We're going to run over there and hang out over there. Want to go? We were talking about homesteading tonight. You were busy, huh? Did you go hunting? Live. Okay. Let's go, guys. Let's go raiding. Let me copy-paste that one more time. We're going to go over there, and I will see you guys. I will definitely be doing a live stream Monday from 5 to 7. Don't know what kind yet, but I will let you guys know. Okay, let's go. Love you, Shan. Love you, Nance, if you're in here still. Love you, Ellen. Love you, everybody.